to Dyess game. As long as he said, as long as I have breath, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to live for him. I'm going to honor God. I'm going to be a witness. I'm going to do what he's called me to do. When I die, that's game. To enter the presence of God for eternity. That's game. That's not something to fear. That's 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 game. He goes on in 1 Corinthians 1, 24 to 26. He says, But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that through my being with you, again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. He says, I, I know God's going to keep me here because he's called me to minister to his body, to his church, to my fellow believers, my family, my Christian family. He's called me to, to serve you, to help you grow in your relationship. You see, he said in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. So the day I received Jesus Christ, I died to myself. I died to sin. And now I live for him. He lives in me. Paul was never ashamed to, uh, to ask Christians, believers, churches, to pray for him. In at least seven of his letters, he mentioned his, his great need for prayer support. Paul, the believers in Corinth, Corinth they, were, they were helping each other in 111. The words helping together, that comes from a word in the Greek that, that has, that's made up of three words. With, under, and work. With, under, and work. And so what it means is a picture of laborers kind of under this load together, carrying a piano or carrying a huge conference table, which uh, we did here one time. And, and it took three of us, we needed four, because it hurt. It was heavy. It made a dent in my truck when I carried the thing. Uh, and, and I hope nobody moves it because it was so much work because I want to dedicate it to eternity to stay in that back room back there. But that's the picture you see here. Working together, sharing this load. And, and that's the picture of prayer. When we pray for someone, it's like we're shoulder to shoulder with them, helping them carry that burden. It's also encouraging to know that the Holy Spirit is also there, assisting in our praying and, and helps us to carry that load. That's why I ask you, you know, if you have a prayer request, please put it on the front of your connection card because that's a serious ministry for our church and for, for many of the people that pray. Um, and we've seen so many answers to God uh, that God has provided in these prayers. In Romans 8, 26, it says, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we don't know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. So God works out His purposes in the trials of fire if we will yield to Him, if we will trust Him, if we will obey Him in what He tells us to do. Difficulties, they can increase our faith. They can be used by God to strengthen our prayer lives. They can, call, they, can, they can draw us to God, to a closer relationship. They can draw us to other believers in a closer relationship as we share our burdens with them. Years ago, I remember watching the uh, documentary movie called Dream Team. It's a story of the 1992 Olympics basketball team that had Magic Johnson, Mary, uh, Mary, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Charles Barkley, and others. And this entire team uh, was placed in the, the NBA Hall of Fame. Amazing, crazy kind of team. But they lost their first game against some, to me, unknown college team. Then coach let them lose by not making the adjustments and substitutions because he wanted them to quit playing against each other and start playing as a team. He wanted them to know that, that they could be beat in their own strength and abilities. After that game, this team came together and they helped each other and they shared the load of responsibility and they played unselfishly for something greater than themselves. And you see, that's what God has called us and that's what he's called us children to do as well. These difficulties can be used to glorify God. So when you find yourself struggling in life, instead of focusing on that trial and struggle, focus on what God has done for you. Focus on what he's, how he's blessed you in the past. Focus on how he, he is able to, to handle whatever you're facing, any trial, any struggle that you have. He's able to, to work good out of that struggle for his purpose, for his glory. Remember what God does through you. Let him use you and your past 
to encourage others. Humble yourself and let God use every part of you for His purpose. Let Him use others to, to pray for you. Don't let your pride keep others from experiencing God's blessing because you don't let them pray for you. There's so much, fathers, that we can learn from our Heavenly Father. And like I said earlier, just as, as He's always approachable, we need to be approachable. We may not condone some behavior, but we have to love our children unconditionally, just like the Lord loves us. And as I said, we're here to protect our children, but sometimes our discipline is the greatest protection that we can give them. Real love disciplines. And we see that in, in our relationship with the Father, our Heavenly Father. You know, discipline doesn't mean punishment, it means teaching. He teaches us through those difficult lessons. But God is a God of grace. God is a God of, of comfort and compassion. And as dads, as fathers, we must be men of grace, men of compassion. But that requires a relationship with God. In our own strength, we can only be so compassionate and gracious. We need a relationship with God. Receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior not only makes you a man of grace, but it opens a door for you to see your family again in eternity. Is there any reason why you wouldn't want to receive God's free gift of eternal life? He is a loving Father that is just waiting to forgive you for sin and give you eternal life as a free gift. But are you willing to turn from your sin? Are you willing to put your faith in Him today, in Jesus? If you are, I'll invite you to come in just a moment. Would you stand with me as we pray? Father, I just thank you for, for loving me so much that you would put people in my life to, uh, to point me to you. And I speak for everyone in here who has had that experience, and we thank you. We thank you for Christian dads and moms and Sunday school teachers and pastors and staff members and missionaries that you've used for that purpose of pointing us to you. There may be some here today that need that relationship. Maybe they've tried religion, but they need a relationship with Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of their life. Father, I pray that you would draw them to yourself, not to a church, not to a personality, but to you. <coughs> Father, there may be dads here today who feel exactly like Paul did. They just are under so much stress and and just need your grace, need that release, need that peace, need joy once again. Father, give them the grace to lay this burden at your feet, whatever it may be. Give them the humility to, to bow before you right now and allow you to transform their heart and mind right now. Some of us just need some encouragement today. We just need to know that, that you are alive and you're well and you're in control and you love us and you have a purpose for us individually as in families and also as a church. We just need to know that, Father. So, Father, I just pray that your spirit would just wrap your arms around us, that we would feel that love and that encouragement and that purpose that we have in you. You're leading any to, to be a part of our fellowship. Give them the grace and the direction of God. Whatever your will is for our lives, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we sing, if the Lord's